Our scripture passage for today is Exodus 20, verses 3 through 7. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. As we just heard in the song, um, we sang a lot about how we can't keep God in our well-designed constraints, including things that are well-intended, like the church or Bible. There's a line from the song that's particularly striking to me. It says, we cannot keep you in a church, we cannot keep you in a Bible, or it's just another idol to box you in. Have you ever wondered about how we box God in? 
how we put limits and constraints on who God is and what God can do. If you look throughout church history, you see lots of examples of how humanity since the dawn of time has been trying to control and manipulate and understand and grasp the enormity of God. And one way that we've done that is through understanding what God looks like. If you go back through church history, all the doctrines and dogmas and creeds that have ever been written throughout the entire history of the church affirm the fact that God is not a being with a body. God does not have uh, an image or a likeness, so to speak. There's no matter to the essence of God. And yet, when we look at art across the centuries, we see representations of God. And in some ways, this is really helpful, right? It gives us something to contemplate, to, uh, to spark our curiosity, to invite us into a sense of wonder about what God is like and what God can do. But when we stop there and we, and we start to believe that God only looks a certain way, we take the infiniteness of God and we turn it into what can be an idol. The passage we read from Scripture is from Exodus, uh, and it's the sharing of the Ten Commandments. And you hear this passage, and many of you might have heard this before, you shall make no other idols. Um, and a lot of times when we hear that passage, if you're anything like me, you think of the golden calf or some sort of statue or representation of something that is utterly other than God that we bow down and worship. And certainly God has some specific words about the people who do that. But not just golden calves are at stake here. When we decide that we know definitively what God looks like, how God acts, and who God loves, we've turned God into an idol. The images of God that are behind me provide a conversation of sorts. It's not just one glimpse of God, but lots of different glimpses of God, what God looks like in different cultural context and historical backgrounds. And it, it, it aids us in our vastness of understanding who God is. And when we understand what it means to be created in the image of God, we are invited to look around the vastness of humanity and all of our diversity and see that God represents all of us and all of us are represented by God rather than one static image of an old white guy with a beard. And it's interesting to think about that because when we think about what it means to bear the image of God and what it means to think about pondering and inviting our curiosity into the vastness of God, it invites us into a sense of wonder. Because when we hold open our curiosity, it also invites us into a space of humility, knowing that we don't know everything there is to know about God. And there's a great giftedness in that. When we hear uh, verse 7 of Exodus 20, it says, you shall not misuse the name of God. And it, for years and years, I you know, heard that commandment. And some other translations say, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. And for the longest time, I thought that that meant that you shouldn't utter Jesus's full name when you stub your toe or hurt your finger, that it was somehow that was using the Lord's name in vain. But as I've come to understand the fuller meaning of that, it's not that we utter a certain name at a certain time, it's that when we appropriate God's name for our own agendas, that is us misusing the name of God. When we attach God's name and authority to things that are outside of God's nature and that advance our own agenda, that is using the Lord's name in vain. So friends, as we go forth this week, I want to encourage us to do some, some wondering um, some wondering and, and stoking our curiosity about what it is that God is like. What does it mean to be made in God's image? And not just one static image, but this dynamic image of a God that represents all cultures and all times. That God who is without form or body, and yet we bear the image of God. What does that mean to you? And let us not stop at one image or one representation of God, but let us do the work of imagination, holy imagination, to think what does it look to bear the image of God through our love, through our grace, through the mercy that we share with everyone whom we encounter. What does it look to share God's image and to bear God's image into the world like that? 
So friends, may we go forth this week seeking humbly to lean into that likeness into which we were created. May we seek to walk humbly as image bearers of the divine. And may we encounter the divine in all that we do. Thanks be to God. Amen.
song proclaims that the earth is the Lord's. Your voice said thunders, the oaks start twisting, the forest sounds with cedars breaking. The waters see you and start their writhing. From the depths, the song is rising. Now it's rising from the ground. We sing holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours. shaking the mighty mountains now are trembling creation sees you and starts composing the fields and trees they start rejoicing now it's rising from the ground
Break the 